Father, I praise you with all of my heart. I ask you, Lord, that your message spoken today would pierce the hearts of not just the young, but of the old, of all ages, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak, that your Holy Spirit would direct me, my, my, my tongue, my heart, my eyes, and my ears. Help me, Lord, to hear you, to bring this word that you would want to be spoken. And Lord, may it encourage, edify, and convict, and set captives free. It's in the name of Jesus I pray, Father. Amen. The message is entitled, The Purpose of a Christian School. Now, in this message, I will address in order, first, teachers, and then I will address pastors and teachers, uh, pastors and churches, I'm sorry. Number one, teachers. Number two, pastors and churches. And number three, I will address parents. Now, before I get started in this, I want to tell you, because you may be watching this video and you may not know who I am, you know, at a later time you may be watching this video. And so I will tell you, my name is Michael Brian Garcia, I'm pastor here at Grace Christian Center, my wife, Anna, and uh, she, we have been married 29 years today, October 23rd, and um, we have raised our children, we now have a grandchild, we've been through 15 years of senior uh, ministry. Uh, in the senior and me in the senior pastor position I've been a youth pastor I've been a, I am a senior pastor I've, I've dealt with we have dealt with kids of all ages um, we have a school now Grace Christian Center School K4 through 12 we are going into our seventh year now with the school um, and the school is growing tremendously we are excited about that because it is all for his glory and so I, I think I I um, may not be totally qualified, but I think I can speak a little on what God would want me to speak about this message in, regard, in regards to the purpose of a Christian school, in regards to public school, in regards to kids of all ages who are in school today. And so, why do we have a school? Well, I'll tell you why. Because God said, let there be a school. Simply put. Just like God said, let there be light, it had no choice. God's will shall be done. And God told us in my heart, and then I shared that with my wife and with our daughter, Mariana, and our son, Michael. And our daughter, Mariana, who is with us, and she leads the school. The Holy Spirit has given her tremendous wisdom. And I'm not just saying this because she's our daughter, but I am so proud of her. And she has been through a lot, especially the past couple of years, in regards to just how... how how difficult things can be, and just, not just in life, but with the ministry of, of, of running the school. And, you know, I know that Jesus is the one who makes all things flow, and he has used her tremendously in, in the building up of this school. Uh, you know, um, and Anna and I have said, you know, if, you know, we, we just thank God for, for the Lord putting into her strength and wisdom and everything that we need to to do this school. And uh, she, she, is, she is behind every single part of, of the school and what, what we do here. She has created, some, brought in so many ideas and my, again, it's all the wisdom from the Lord. So the three of us, and along now with Miss Rachel, uh, Pastor Eric's wife, Rachel, she's come on board now and she's helping and uh, she's slowly but coming in and, and working with that. And in the future, we will, Lord willing, have some more teachers come. and. With this, we, we have a school, and um, it's a new type of school. And um, it's not just your regular Christian school, but it is really, you know, geared towards academics, and, and it's really geared toward planting the Word of God in their hearts. Now, I want to get into this message and just let you know who I am now, who we are, if you've never seen us before. Let me start off with this bold statement that the Lord gave to me last night. Again, because this message was given to me yesterday. And let me just say this. The Lord put in my heart, he says, if they cannot kill them in the womb, they will kill them in the classroom. If they cannot kill them in the womb, they will kill them in the classroom. And who are we talking about? About children. And who is they? They are not just, not flesh and blood, but it is the kingdom of Satan 
unseen powers, unseen forces in the heavenly realms. And I'm talking about demonic manifestation, demonic presence that flood the hearts and the minds of people. And you could think of it as demon, demon possession, demon oppression, but that is what it is. Just as God, through His Holy Spirit, can lead people and direct people, so can the kingdom of Satan. Through the kingdom of Satan, through demonic spirits, He can lead and direct people as well to do His will. And what is the will of the kingdom of Satan? Jesus says that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, but I come that they may have life, and life abundantly. Now, it is not our choice to kill. It is Satan's choice to kill. And it is our choice because God said, let there be life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in Jesus, his son, they would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. Now, here's what I know for a fact. Some of you watching online, you, you may be watching because you're, you have kids, you know someone who have kids, and you're, you're concerned about the direction that the school is going in, the public school system, the nation is going in. And again, we've always had riots, you know, going back to the 50s and the 60s, we've always had protests, and we've always had, you know, these issues, social issues going on. But I believe today, at the time that we're in, they're more demonic-led than ever before. They're more evil than ever before. We, we see such an incredible realm of evil at work in the United States of America like never before. And the Bible has told us this, that as we come near to the end of the church age, that we would see these things. But until then, what are we to do? We are to occupy. We are to make our presence known as Christians, not by force, not by forcing people into Christianity. That, that is not Christianity. God, God is a gentleman. God does not force himself on anybody. People clearly know. You do not have to be a Christian to understand that there is something different happening in this world, a battle between good and evil. And there are so many people that have an open heart to the spiritual realm. But sadly, so many opinions are out there. So many religions are out there. And they cannot all be right. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, He is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody could come unto the Father except through Christ alone. So Jesus made a statement. He said, He is the only way. There is no other way. Well, when we know that all religions deny Christ as Lord and Savior, as the only begotten Son of God, either they are right or they are wrong. And either Jesus is right or He is a lunatic or He's just lying. But I believe that Jesus is telling the truth about who he is because I see so much hatred towards Jesus Christ. And I see that this world is evil and corrupt. And so this world loves greed, loves corruption, lo loves these things. And so whatever the world loves, it is opposite to what is actually true. And Jesus is the truth. And we see our kids today, their, their minds are being corrupted. They're being told lies upon lies upon lies. But the truth is found in the scripture. Again, if they cannot kill them in the womb, they will kill them in the classroom. And that they is demonic powers at work in the lives of people who hate God, who have no place for God in their hearts. And they want to share that destruction. They want to share that pain and that misery. Now, in Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now look at that statement. The Bible says, train up a child when they're young and when they're old, they will not depart from that. And it's so important that we understand, first of all, that as children, the way you raise a child, that's pretty much who they're going to be when they grow up. Now you need to understand this also. We are all born with the sin nature. And I'm going to get into a lot of stuff in just a moment. And some of it is going to be mind-boggling. But... You have to understand that when we're born as a child, we are naturally sinful people. You do not have to teach a child to, tell, to, to lie. You do not have to teach a child to be stingy. Children are naturally stingy. They do not want to share. Children will naturally lie because that is the sin nature in all of humanity. But we do have to teach a child to tell the truth, to do what is right. Why? Because there is nothing good that is naturally in us. We have to be taught to do good we do not have to be taught to do bad you get what I'm saying that reveals the sin nature in all of humanity we are all sinful people we have all fallen short of the glory of God 
And the only way we can be saved from this sin nature within us, be forgiven of our sins, is through what Jesus did on the cross. Through repentance of your sin, confessing your sin to Christ, and following Him all the days of your life. You will be saved. And He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, let's identify the problem. Let's look at what is happening in America alone today. In our public school system. Before I tell you that, all of what I'm about to tell you, that there is a good, uh, you can go to Amazon Prime, yes to Amazon, and there is a, a video out there called Agenda 2, Masters of Deceit. Agenda Part 2, Masters of Deceit. It is a documentary that is made by a Christian, um, a Christian man, a very devout Christian man, and is one of, it is one of the most powerful accurate documentaries out there about the public school system from its history from the eight, early 1800s all the way to the present time. And it shows you how communism, socialism, which are forms of religion in the world, have made its way into the American public school system, how it has made its way into churches, and how it, has inf it always had an agenda, a God hat hatred of God agenda. Now, that is a very good documentary to watch in your own time, and I, I highly recommend that. Again, that is called Agenda 2, Masters of Deceit. It is well worth the buy. Uh, and watch it, and you will be blessed with the truth that is out there. Now, again, what is the problem? We look at our children, and every, every decent parent loves their children. Amen? Amen? But we know that's not the case. There are so many parents that are bad parents today, just like there are bad, there are bad kids because there are bad parents. Amen? But yet we focus on the kids and say, where did they go wrong? Well, we look at the parents. There are bad kids because there are bad parents. There are rebellious kids because there were rebellious parents. And it was their parents' relationship with God that was not right. The kids learn from that. The kids go with that. Not always, but mostly always. Now, I came across an article yesterday where a drag queen shows were shown to kids in school. They were reading books to primary age children. They were teaching them about transgenderism. And transgenderism is a transgender person is someone whose gender identity or gender expression that does not correspond with their sex assigned at birth. That's what transgenderism is. They were born a boy, but they want to be a girl. Transgender. And so these transgender people come into the schools today throughout America, here in Texas too, to primary children, and they're telling them you could be non-binary. You can choose the gender you want to be. It's not happening maybe in your school, but it is coming. And it is happening in many, many states throughout the United States of America. They're teaching this to kindergartners, the first graders, the second graders. They're going directly to the youth. And that is why I opened up with this message. If they cannot kill them in the womb, they will kill them in the classroom. Because it is that, that ideology that's, that is so open to wanting to kill an unborn child in the womb. Because for whatever reason that happened, well, because of incest, because of a rape, do you think God is bigger than all the sins of the world? Absolutely. God works through a sin-fallen world. God can love you through all the sins that even you committed. Whatever it is that you did, God will love you to Himself if you will open yourself up. But it does not give us a right to kill an unborn child in the womb, regardless of how that child was conceived. Because God can work through the most evil atrocities and he could bring something beautiful out of it. Just look at the salvation message. He looked at a world that was lost, but God in the flesh came to save any who desired to be saved. And we look at the womb today, and I believe that this is the biggest genocide in the history of the world. 70 million plus babies since 1973 have been aborted by the United States of America law. It is illegal. Because those on the left fight with those on the right. This is not a Democrat-Republican issue. Amen. Throw that out the window. This is not a political issue. This is a God issue. Because God brings life. 
And God loves the womb. There is so much scripture that talks about God saying, I saw you before you were created. I loved you and called you before you were even knitted together in the womb of your mother. God saw that life and counted it as worthy. But yet, it's always those who hate God that are ready to kill the baby in the womb. And so if they cannot kill the baby in the womb, then they will go to the classrooms and kill them there. By polluting their mind with perversion, with immorality and destruction that will lead them to an eternal separation from God at the end of their life. If this does not ca catch your attention, you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I tell you on the authority of the word of God, this is the biggest blemish on this nation today. This is the biggest blemish on the American church today. We are allowing blood to be spilled, innocent blood. And this is not right. A mother that we know told her third grader that homosexuality is wrong. And the little girl said, but mom, love is love. Meaning, mom, you don't know what you're talking about. It's okay to be homosexual. A third grader. When I was in third grade, I had no idea what that was. I was interested in being in the Cub Scouts, <laughs> playing baseball, doing things like that. I had no idea. Today's kids are so far beyond that because of what this evil, evil move is doing to our kids in society today. The Bible says God is love. And the Bible says that God made man and woman. I'm not preaching hate speech here. I'm preaching what the Bible says. That he made man and woman for a one relationship between a husband and a wife. Now, what do we call this when this little third grader says, Mom, no, love is love. What do we call that? One word. You want to know what that word is? Indoctrination. They are already being indoctrinated at such an early age to go against the word of God. Now, look at the school shootings. In my day, we had no such thing happen in our schools. I, yeah, I went to school in 1875. 1975. 1972, I was born. By 19, was 79, I was in school. We, that, that was unheard of school shootings. I remember the first time uh, in my memory when the first school shooting actually happened that I can think of, uh, I, I may be wrong, but it was the Columbine High School in Colorado when those two young men who had no hope because of the way they were raised went and destroyed the lives and destroyed so many families forever on this earth. And since then, school shootings are a regular thing are a regular thing, are a regular thing. But yet, society says it's the guns problem. It's not the gun problem. The problem is not guns. Because you see, Cain didn't use a gun to kill his brother Abel. He most likely used a rock or a stick. And so it doesn't matter what the weapon is. It, what matters is what's in the heart. Why do you hate so much? Why are you lost in so much? That is the problem. And see, the Lord wants us, church, to help those deal with that problem of the heart. But society will say, no, no, to distract us from our mission. It's not a heart issue. It's more of a mental issue. And it's more of gun law issues. That's what it is. And so the fight begins. And then the church gets caught up in that kind of fight. And the church gets caught up with conservatives and Republicans. And the church says, well, we need to protect our God-given rights of guns. Look, I have nothing against guns. I own gun. Why? Because there are some crazy people out here. I would never want to use a gun on anybody. But at the same time, at the same time, you have to protect your home. You have to protect your family. I am, we cannot let, I mean, I, I'm so heartbroken what happened at Sutherland Springs Baptist Church south of San Antonio several years ago on a Sunday morning when 20 
something people in the congregation were killed because one gunman went in there and shot everybody up when that could have been stopped Bible says well I mean well people say well well does God why would God allow such a thing again like I said from the beginning God is working he's working through a wicked generation rain falls on the just and the unjust but see that's not the debate here the debate here is what's in our heart what's in our mind and we as the churches in America we're allowing our generation to be caught up in all of that the fight begins not in the classroom the fight begins in your home and if you do not win in the home you will lose in the classroom now again this message is entitled the purpose of a Christian school not only school shootings left and right murder blood in the classrooms but not only that teachers raping children it's so common today so many men and women teachers having sexual relations with kids who are not even I, I just it's such a perversion but that's in the public school system nationwide now and it happens more than you think we see what is reported but what what is the statistics of that that is not reported again the problem is in the mind and in the heart not only that but the public school system is dealing with critical race theory what is critical race theory well one of the core beliefs of critical race theory is that all white people are racist whether they think they are or not you white people how do you feel about that you see I was raised through the military and I was taught that we're all equal my dad taught me that in the military you're equal you know you're there for each other I had black guys white guys Mexicans Puerto Ricans all different colors come to my house Marines and I was a young kid and these Marines would come they were young also 18 19 20 years old all of them talked to me all of them would, would, would help me with my bike or something and I saw all different colors I was not raised to think that way as a matter of fact I today believe that we are not a racist nation but there is a group of people that would want you to think that in this nation you can be whatever you want to be how could that happen in a racist nation you you know we had racism here many many years ago and there was a war fought over that there is no perfect nation there is no perfect church but we as a nation have come a long long way and you can be anything you want in this nation but I, I am not going to believe that we are a nation that is filled with systematic racism I do not believe that I do not believe that yes there are some bad cops out there there are some bad doctors out there there are some bad lawyers out there there are some bad preachers out there but it doesn't mean that we are corrupt now non-binary is also being taught in the school system what is non-binary they're teaching kids that you can choose what gender you want to be or you don't have to even choose to be a gender at all you're not male or female now again some of you online or here can say well I'm not learning that in my school yet not yet that's right not yet but it is coming and it is already happening wokeism now what is wokeism y'all have heard about wokeism in the news right wokeism is to embrace progressive activism all of what I've been talking about this is what wokeism is you need to be awake to all of this immorality and you need to accept it and if you do not accept it you're racist you're a bigot you're a religious zealot you're, you're just someone that's disgusting and evil if you do not accept all of this transgenderism critical race theory non-binary uh, things if you do not accept this stuff then woe to you you need to be awoke you need to be awake to this new realm of evil that is flooding the earth you need to accept it you know the Bible talks about the Antichrist the final Antichrist where the Antichrist will force his rule upon every person on the face of the earth we are so close to that closer than you realize 
because we already see the spirit of Antichrist at work in wokeism, forcing these things upon you. The NFL bows down to it. All kinds of organizations bow down to it. Corporations bow down to it. Billionaires bow down to it. Poor people are bowing down to it. School systems are bowing down to it. And you know who runs the school systems? The teachers' unions. And they are some of the most corrupt systems in America today. They do not care about kids. They care about dollars. And they're driven by people like George Soros, billionaires who fund money to them to bring in such immoral things because they are God haters. Now our battle is not with flesh and blood, but we do see flesh and blood being enslaved by demonic powers to do evil things. Now, to some of you, this may mean nothing. And if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. But look, let me just tell you this. Justifying sending your kids to public school. Today, you cannot do that. You cannot send your children to play with wolves. Well, Michael, what do we do? How do we, how do we get out of this? I, I, I love my kids. I'm a Christian. Or, or you may be saying, well, I'm not a Christian, but I hate what's going on. Well, you have to, for those who, who are not Christians, you may be watching online. Let me just tell you this. You need to come to know who Jesus Christ is. And also you need to know who you are in regards to how he views who you are. You are fallen in sin, but God came to redeem you. Now, in doing that, the gospel, this is what you call the gospel of Christ. And I know there's something tugging at your heart. And you know that what I'm saying is true. You, you may not understand it, but all I can tell you is to fall on your knees, call out to Jesus, and listen to his voice. And he will show you the way in which you should go, and the way of repentance of your sins, and the way of receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and in the way of following him every day of your life. Because in that, that is the only place to, eternal, to the eternal presence of God for eternity. Look, understand something about yourself, human being. You are all eternal beings. You will live forever. You will live forever because the breath of God is in you. But where you live for eternity, that is your choice. People said, how could God send a person to hell? God has never sent anybody to hell. People send themselves when they deny Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. People send themselves. God made a way for you to come to him, but he is not going to force himself upon you. The devil will force himself upon you, but God will not. Freely come of your own free will, and in surrendering your will to him, he will be your Lord and Savior. Now, I want to talk about a couple of things, but before that, I want, to I want to talk to teachers, the churches and pastors, and the parents. But I would like to bring a, a couple of scriptures in first. And I'm going to talk about homeschool as well, too. As well as private Christian school. In Matthew 19, 13 through 15, it says this here. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them. This is to Jesus. And that Jesus would pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus laid his hands on them, and he departed from there. Do you know why the devil wants to lay his hands on kids today? Because Jesus wants to lay his hands on you. Jesus wants to bless you. Do you know why humanity, human beings, people on the earth, do you know why the devil hates you? Because God loves you. See, his fight is with God. He is an eternal sworn enemy of God, but he is already defeated. And the Bible already says where his place of eternal damnation is, it's soon coming. But the devil hates you because God loves you. Jesus desired to touch these children and lay his hands on them and pray over them. Why? Because they needed to be protected. Parents, bring your children to Jesus. You love them, but you can only protect your children so much. 
You cannot fully do this on your own. As our kids grew up, I would always place my hands over Michael and Mariana for years upon years through their elementary, through junior high, and through high school, and even as they were going into their college. Every morning, every school morning, every school morning for years, I did not miss it. I would place my hands on them in the house every day and pray over them that they would be protected. And I thank Jesus that he honored that prayer. And even now, I pray for them. I pray for them, and I'll continue to pray for them. And now I have someone else to pray for, our grandson. But Jesus wanted to pray over these kids. Why? Because they need it. They needed godly direction. They needed protection from the world. In Matthew 18, 2 through 7, but, but I'm sorry, but let me go back to this, what we just read. But even Christians were stopping Jesus from praying over the kids, his own disciples. I have heard too many Christians in my day say, well, we need to send our Christian children to public schools because they could be a light in a dark place. That is a foolish statement. Our children are still too young and they're overwhelmed in number to be a light in a dark place like that. I've seen it happen time and time and time and time again. I've seen it. Our children are so young at that age that they need to be built up and find out who they are in Christ. And I do not agree with that. I, I, I will tell you, the public school system, there are some good teachers out there, there are some Christian teachers out there, but who you work for, it's the world. And it's a cesspool of evil like you cannot even believe it. And it is going to get worse and worse and worse. And my heart is burdened for these children. My heart is burdened for these teachers who care for these children, who really want to be a, uh, have an impact on their life to be good and godly people. But even the Jesus' disciples were getting in the way of Jesus blessing them. And today, there are Christians that are getting in the way of these children being blessed by the Lord. In Matthew 18, 2 through 7, it says, Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin? Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? This is Christ saying there are people out there who are tempting these little children to do evil and to be evil people. And sorrow awaits them. God will judge them. Now our battle, Christian, is not with those people. God will judge them if they do not repent of their sins. But there is a battle there for the generation. There is a battle for the youth. And Christ clearly says it right here in Scripture. That if you do not turn from your sins, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And these children have to be taught that. But today, there are so many parents that are so busy with idolatry, with their jobs. They're busy with their, their, their friends, circle of friends. They're busy going out with happy hour. They're busy doing all these other activities, sporting events. They're so busy with all of this other stuff that they fail to neglect what is the most important thing as a parent. And that's raising your children in the ways of the Lord. If they do not see you pray, they will not pray. If they do not see you walk by faith, they will not walk by faith. If they do not see you as you go through trials and tribulations, through your failures and victories, then they will not know how to fight the good fight of faith as well. But if they see you compromising, being complacent, being lukewarm, that is what you will produce in their life and all is lost. You and your children. There has to be a break in the generation. 
And this continuing cycle from, from father to father, from daughter to daughter, there has to be a break. Jesus has to intervene somewhere down the line and say, this one belongs to me. This one will call on my name. In the book of Genesis, it says that in that day, they began to call on the name of the Lord. It doesn't say how, but they began to know who the Lord was. And we today, we have no excuse we have no excuse today. We have to see that all that is about to hit the fan has done hit the fan. And yet there are still parents who just don't care. A mother here in Houston killed, murdered her five-year-old daughter, tortured her. And they say it was because of mental illness. It is because of the presence of demonic powers the little girl as she was dying said, Mommy, I'll, I promise I'll be better. I'll do good. I'll do good. Those were the little girl's dying words. People want to just go and hang the mother. Is that the solution? Look, we need to look to the root of the problem. Hearts without Jesus. Homes without Jesus. If the battle is not won in the home, it cannot be won in the public school system. And as a preacher, you know... I'm, I'm, the Lord is, is leading the preachers to speak to both, to the home and to the public school. There is no such thing as separation of church and state. Why, why would you want God in your home, but you don't want God in your school? You want God everywhere. Why? Because with God, you shall be saved. You shall be protected. Again, this, but not forcing this. Let God lead. Let God fight the battles. But you stand up for what is right, for what is holy and what is righteous and what is true. Jesus says, what sorrow comes to those who are doing the tempting? There are a lot of people out there tempting the generations to sin. And sadly, many of us Christians are caught up in that. We like to watch the Kardashians. We like to watch all these celebrities, how they look, how they dress, their selfies they take. You know, these, these celebrities have 2 million followers on Instagram, and all they do is just take selfies of themselves, uh, filthy, disgusting pictures, and things like that. But how many followers are followers of Jesus? Jesus doesn't have an Instagram. But how many are really following Jesus? Jesus is not looking uh, for you on social media. He's looking at you for your heart, for your mind. Now, you may follow Jesus, but there is a multitude out there that does not know Christ. If this does not burden your heart, you need to question your relationship with Jesus Christ, Christian. Because my heart is burdened tremendously for this. For these children that are being perverted and lied to. My heart is, is tormented by this. How can I go to heaven... And never have said nothing or done nothing. Blood on my hands. I saw the evil sweep up the children of this world. And they were lost for eternity. And I had the word. I knew the truth, but I said nothing. And I did nothing. We just sleep through church services. We just sleep through, through life. We just were casually sleeping through. We're just casually taking this oh well you know god will come soon you are the body of christ Amen. you are his hands you are his feet you are his heart and you have to make a difference leave a legacy that honors god now i want to speak to teachers now teachers christian teachers get out of this corrupt system get a game plan with churches now i'm going to tell you what we need to we know what the problem is now here's a solution Teachers, God anointed you. God called you. Those who love children, who want to see these children grow up in a good, spiritual, healthy environment. Teachers, get out of this corrupt system. We live in a nation where we can do this. When there's a mass exodus of teachers from the public school system, you can do this out of your home. Open up an own home school. You can teach them yourself. How do you think they did it in the 1800s 
in America. Little home house, little one room uh, houses where one teacher taught many kids. And they were strong, healthy minded kids growing up with one teacher. You can do this today in your home. You know, you, you went to college, you have a degree, you, you have a go get attitude. I, I encourage you to go to your pastors, to go to the churches that you attend. And, and, and here's where I want to talk to churches and pastors. Churches, pastors, listen up. You need to open the doors to your, to, to your buildings. Open their doors. This is a crisis in this nation. Your building, pastor, is not meant to only be open on Wednesdays and Sundays. That is a shame. If the YMCA is open seven days a week, why cannot your church be open? But we only have two or three people on staff. You open those doors up, you're going to see a lot more people coming. You're going to see God open up doors and opportunities and people come. You're going to start seeing an overflow of the move of God. You're going to start seeing salvation in the hearts of families and people. Churches that do this, God will connect them. Resources, faith. You'll start to see the hand of God move. You need to open your doors. Those Christian teachers, go to the churches. Give them what God has put in your heart. Say, hey, look, I have an idea. Well, why can't we do this? I've talked to several churches already that, that are so interested in this, but then they don't get back with me. And I'm like, you're missing a golden opportunity. Churches, we are to be the light of the uh, salt of the earth. Churches, we are to, to be the first ones to infiltrate the home with the presence of God. And it's mostly done by reaching out to the children. And you know the enemy, that group that is doing the evil bid of Satan today, they understand this principle, they understand this concept, and they're out there in the public school system. This queer, uh, that's what they call it, it's a queer drag organization out of San Francisco. They're fun to go in and teach these kids, kindergartners, first graders, third graders, about being transgender, non-binary. It's lying to these kids and telling them there's something different than what God created them to be. But in the words of this third grader, we know, but love is love. God is love. And God says what is right and God says what is wrong. And if you go against that, you go against God. You'll have a, you'll have a conversation with Him in the end at the judgment seat of God. And that is why Christ came that you would be excused from the judgment seat of God so that you would have eternal peace and presence with Him through the forgiveness of your sins to Jesus Christ. Now, we will see souls and families saved in opening schools in our churches. Church members, you need to step up. Church members, you need to step up. You need to support your pastors. You need to support the ministry. You need to take back our children. A local church, a local church helped us this week here in town. We were taking our kids on a field trip, and we, we, have, we had to get 26 kids on a bus. We don't have a bus. We'd have to rent vans or buses. You're looking, talking about thousands of dollars. They're expensive now. And my wife, the Lord told her, call this church. And she called them, and it was just like that. They answered the call. They came through, and God knows who they are. And God loves them, and God will bless them. And I thank God. Churches need to come together. The Methodist Church in Santa Fe, they're splitting because they're taking a vote to remain with the, the, the main denomination that believes, in trans, that believes in transgenderism. They believe in ordaining homosexual pastors. They believe in all of this stuff. When the Bible says that that is wrong. And these people, these church members are heartbroken because they're like, where are we going wrong? But I, I, I'm, I'm not shocked to, to hear this, but, but if you've been in a church, sitting in a church pew, and all of a sudden your church wants to go this different direction, weren't you paying attention? This just did not happen overnight. Weren't you paying attention in, in what the preacher's been preaching? Do you know that 
There's no presence of God there? You know, there are people that call themselves Christians that they're against all this idolatry and stuff, but yet they don't even know the presence of God. And not only that, but they don't even know the presence of Satan. The presence of evil. And the presence of evil is in some of these churches. We need to pray for these churches. Pastors, churches, open a school in your church. Pray about this and do it. Now I'm going to say, well, we need to pray about this because, you know, this is, this is a, a big endeavor. Look, let me tell you something. What have you been praying about? Do it. Just do it. Because our children's lives are at stake. This is, this is on the heart of God. Just do it. They'll show you how to do this. It is not hard at all. At all. Because the Holy Spirit is involved in this and it will flow into place. You will meet trials and tribulations, but God will see you through everything. Doors will open up, pastors. You'll be able to, to minister to people that you never could minister to before. It, it is a blessing. And to those parents who are bringing their children to Christian schools, do not resist the move of God. Do not resist the move of God. It's not that God just wants your kid to come to a Christian school. God wants to be in your home and in your heart. Don't fight God anymore. Let Him in. He's opened the door for you, and that's just the beginning. We need to win back our generation, and it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, parents, parents, your kids are watching you. That's good if you're a godly parent. But if you don't have a relationship with Christ, that is not good. Your kids are watching. Your kids are learning. And that cute little Johnny or cute little Sally will one day grow up to be a full-fledged adult. And did you honor God and did you honor them by doing what was right? Now, I, I'm not a perfect parent. I have failed my children. I have failed my wife. I have failed God. I am not perfect. But I thank God I am not who I used to be. And I'll never be who I once was. Because the Holy Spirit keeps us on the up and up. Men, parents, husbands, wives, are you tired of being stuck in that spiritual rut? If you're there, then where are your children? What about your children? If you're in this depressed place, if you're in this place of anger, if you're in this place of frustration, if you're in this place of lust, if you're in this place of greed, if you're in this place of perversion, where do you think your children are going to be at? God saw a, 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 a broken world and it moved his heart. And he says, I'm going to save what can be saved. And he moved. Praise God. Praise God. Now, parents, freedom comes at a price. Amen? Freedom comes at a price. And the freedom of our children's upbringing comes at a price. We as Americans, we know that freedom comes at a price. But freedom for our children comes at a price as well. Parents must be willing to sacrifice so that their children can have a fighting chance. Well, I can't send my kid to school, uh, public, cr uh, private Christian school, because it just costs too much money. You know what? Add up how much you spend one in one month's time at a uh, convenience store. You can afford it. Add up how much money you spend uh, doing this and doing that. You can afford it. Pastors, churches, teachers who are willing to do this endeavor, There are many ways that you can adopt a certain curriculum where you keep the price down. I mean, you've got to be wise about this. Give us a call. Give us a call. I know there are some that are watching. And I know there are some pastors that are watching right now. 
I, I welcome your call and you will not believe how God can do this for you and for these children. But parents, you must be willing to sacrifice whatever you need to sacrifice so that your children can have a fighting chance. Because if you don't give them a fighting chance, who will? It's already an uphill battle. Now, prayer and fasting is required before entering this endeavor. It is. It is required. Now, I said just go, start it. If you've been praying, if you know what it means to fast at certain times, as the Holy Spirit will lead you, then go for this. But prayer and fasting is required in this. But why are our children facing this evil? Well, because we live in this evil world. I've already explained myself in that. But the failure of godly living and a surrendered heart to the teachings of Jesus Christ, this is what we're seeing happening in the world today. You see, your own interpretation of scriptures could be wrong, Christian. Your own interpretation of scriptures could be wrong. And if it is, you will see it manifest in the life of your children and in your life. And you can't be wrong about this. You cannot be wrong about this. There are so many false teachings in the church in America today. And something needs to change. Let it change in your home. My last scripture I want to bring. Mark 9, 17 through 29. It says, Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought to you my son, who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, he gnashes at his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. And Jesus answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Are we a faithless generation today? Do we not care about these kids? Do we not believe that Jesus can cast out this wickedness from our, from our very presence today? Verse 20, Then they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, when the boy saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed in him, and he fell to the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So, Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. Why did Jesus ask? Jesus knew the answer, but why would he ask? Because the scriptures want us to know of the importance of how the atta demonic attacks happen from childhood. Verse 22. And often he has thrown him, he, the spirit, has thrown the boy into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Let me just stop there, verse 23. You wonder why kids kill themselves. Why kids commit harm to themselves or to others. This little boy had a demonic spirit in him. And it caused him not to speak. Now are all children who don't speak like that? No. But this situation, yes. There are true mental illnesses out there where the brain is damaged. But there are also things out there where there are demonic possessed people. And children. And this spirit was causing this little boy to want to kill himself consistently. And why do we see all this suicide, these school shootings, all of this happening where murder, murder, murder? Because it's demonic manifestation in the lives of these children too. This is real. Why do you think so many in America have an infatuation with running to the theaters to watch these movies that have to do with de demons? haunted you know right now um, Halloween is coming up and so many Christians celebrate Halloween and so many Christians would 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 gnash their teeth at me because because I believe that Halloween is truly a wicked day it, you know again hear me out please please you know I'm not a nut but I too have lived in the world and I too have studied in great depth of the history of, of not just Halloween, but of other days as well that the wicked have honored. The Day of the Dead in Mexico that they honor so much, but yet it's tied to the Catholic Church. 
you know, there is a, there is a, there is a continuing cycle of how they do certain days to honor into Christianity. And Halloween is no different in America. It's no different. Why would we want to glorify or honor or laugh at something that could be evil? But I dress my kid up as a princess. Or I could dress my kid up as a Disney character. You already know that Disney is woke. You already know that Disney is one of the biggest producers in their films now of transgenderism. It's part of what the public school is teaching already. So how are you even connected with all of this? Get wise about this. Look, I'm talking about the lives of your children. If you're just mad because of what I just said, I'm over here talking about the life of your children, of your family. And if you're going to get upset with me, I I'm sorry, but it is the truth. You know, sadly, even Jehovah Witnesses know that Halloween is a day for wicked people. The, tr the, the history, which goes back well beyond America, of what that day really means. There are even ex-Satanists who are now Christians. There are people who are in the occult who are now Christians. They all come out. It's out there. They'll tell you the same thing. Do not celebrate Halloween. It is wicked. You open spiritual doors. Just like playing with a Ouija board. You open spiritual doors. You are doing this in celebrating Halloween. You grieve the heart of God. You quench the Holy Spirit. And if people get mad at me, get mad at me. But I am not going to go to heaven with, with, with being found guilty of not telling you the truth. I do not want to see your kids possessed by demonic spirits. You have no idea how great the demonic army that we face. But at the same time, if we open doors to them, we have no fighting chance. Verse 23, Jesus said to him, if, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Jesus was saying, you must have faith. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Is he contradicting himself? He says, Lord, I, I believe, but there's still something in me that makes me doubt. You're a Christian. You believe, but there's still something in you that's not right. If you will just admit it and be honest with Jesus, you'll see some healing. Verse 25. When Jesus saw, and you got to come to the Lord with tears. Because his son is dying. How do we raise, and just, you can pull that scripture off for a moment, please. How can we raise, Christian, I'm speaking to the Christian. How can we raise our sons and daughters to act like the world? To live like the world? To dance to the music of the world? How? When we see, you know, so many Christians are so quick to know, uh, oh yeah, there's the Illuminati, there's the New World Order coming, you know, there, there, there's a conspiracy of this, a conspiracy of that. But yet, when it comes to your kids, you'll allow a little compromising coming into their life. It's okay to do this, it's okay to do that. That just, that just does not make any sense to me. And I know I've been guilty of that with my kids in the past. So I'm speaking from experience. Again, when Jesus saw, verse 25, when Jesus saw that people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, <coughs> excuse me, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. It was a demonic spirit in this boy. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, the boy is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he came into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? You know what I said? Well, first of all, you're stopping these little kids from coming to me. That's what, if I was Jesus, that's what I would have said. But I'm not Jesus. You remember the scripture we just read earlier? They were stopping the, kid, the children from coming to Jesus. Remember that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Okay? And now they have the nerve to ask Jesus, why couldn't we cast it out? Because you're stopping them from even coming to him. And you're going to cast out the demons? You think you have the power and the wisdom to take care of the ills world? You think you can raise your children right when you don't even bring them all the way to Jesus? When your complacency rubs off on them? When your spiritual laziness towards Jesus rubs off on them? You think Jesus is going to give you power? If he didn't do this for the disciples, he definitely will not do it for you, parent. Again, verse 28, And when he had come into the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? Oh, now they want to speak privately when they were doing something foolish publicly. Verse 29, So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Jesus, didn't, Jesus did not uh, scold them. He did not rebuke them. He just said, This comes out through prayer and fasting. Because he already knew that they knew they were wrong. They knew that. They were learning as they go. And they ended up becoming men of prayer and fasting. Now, if you are not a Christian who knows what it means to pray and fast, and a fasting, you're led by the Holy Spirit to fast. But, but if, you, if, you, if you do not know what it means to pray, not just personal prayer, but even praying with the church, you have no power. I'm going to tell you that right now. You may be on your way to heaven, but you have no power. You have no power. But Michael, I pray at home. Oh, that's fine. But the Bible teaches us plenty about, in the book of Acts, many times when they came together to pray, God decided to move only then. Now, I'm not here to tickle ears. I'm here to tell you truth. Because the Lord loves you and the Lord loves your children. Now, this is the purpose of a Christian school. It's the same purpose that the church has. To save souls. To preach the gospel. When your life is about the will of God and Jesus Christ, then all will make sense. And there's no greater peace and joy that you can have in this world than having the peace of Jesus Christ. Receive that word in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Father, I thank you, and I praise you, Lord. Lord, I pray for those that are watching online, watching this video at a later time. Lord, I pray for those in the sanctuary. Lord, I pray that whoever has heard this word, Lord, that they would respond with a heart that has been pierced by the gospel, that they would respond in a way that is honoring to you, that they would make right decisions of how they're raising their children. That they would be good stewards as parents, good stewards as teachers, good stewards as pastors and elders in the churches and lay leaders in the churches. That they would be good Christians. And that they would be the salt and light of the earth and they would protect these children as you give them strength and wisdom to do so. Lord, I pray, Father, that your will be done. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect Christian. But Lord, I'm praying for a, a reuniting of the churches that we would agree on what is most important. That is Jesus Christ. And let it begin from there. Let healing begin from there. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, for healing. I'm asking you, Lord, for direction. Lord, I'm asking you to Lord, speak to the hearts of those that are watching right now, that are listening at the sound of this voice. Lord, that they would repent of their sins, turn to you, Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, of their sins, and receive you, Lord, as Savior. Jesus, fill them with your Holy Spirit. May they be baptized afresh right here, right now. Lord, strengthen them and help them. My, my friend, Talk to Jesus now. Talk to Jesus now. Let it be well. Let it be well with your soul. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Give them wisdom. Give them healing. Give them direction. Let the purpose of the gospel of Christ be so embedded within their hearts that they would be obedient as they hear your voice and they follow. Let your will be done, Lord, in their lives. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Give God praise in this house. Amen.